Hello there guys, and welcome to some more Endless Space 2. After a bit of a break uh, since we finished the uh, Walters uh, Let's Play thingy, um, I figured uh, we'd have another go at a different faction. And I think that different faction will be the Vaudiani. Um, I'm going to uh, bump the difficulty up to serious. Uh, since that's always a good thing to do. Uh, going to have the pirates on hard, which, uh, yeah, there is a pretty high chance of uh, just dying in the first few turns, but of course, um, as with the previous uh, thing, it's going to be a neat little test to see how far we could go rather than an attempt to just outright win. Although, hopefully that will also happen. So with that out of the way, let's look Choose a bit at the faction. Light. Victims of a classic cycle of over-industrialization, the Vaudiani were saved by technology culled from ruins of the virtual endless. These precursors quickly gained an aura of divinity in the, in the eyes of the Vaudiani and are now worshipped as gods. Clothed in their great black suits of borrowed technology, Vaudiani leaders pilot their great arcs across the star lanes, seeking other peoples to convert, control, and consume. So the point of these uh, little dudes here in their nice little uh, orange glowing suits is that uh, they don't colonize planets not per se not they don't send pops to live on them so their populations live on great arcs and colonize systems in a unique way when arcs anchor in an unpopulated system they exploit all its colonizable planets simultaneously arcs can be gained by leeching captive populations and amassing the unique resource essence so essentially with essence you can generate pops and create arcs um, while the Vaudiani themselves they uh, have l a lower food output but uh, I mean they decrease the food output on the system but uh, they do give a couple of uh, small bonuses to Fitzy. Uh, they're predominantly religious um, with the Federation so uh, in terms of government, uh, they're pretty much, uh, I think, the same as the Vultures. Always seeking. Yeah, Praise except, you know, religious instead of um, to all infidels. science based. So, as traits, they have fast travelers, which gives extra movement. Um, fearless warriors, too, which is 20% uh, bonus infantry health on Empire. Legendary heroes, which means. Um, Minus 50% dust. I'm not sure if it's upkeep or cost and plus two experience per turn. Utopian infrastructure, which gives approval with uh, level modernization. And the technologies we start with are uh, xenobiology, which allows us to uh, get a, the public private partnerships, which is a pretty good improvement for science and to colonize the tundra. And off world agri business, which gives us diplomacy with minor of actions from the start. So yeah, I haven't played these before. The thing might uh, end before it begins. And because I'm practically going into this blind, <clears throat> just feel like I should iterate that so that those uh, those expecting uh, super elite pro plays, um, well, they at least know what to expect for sure. We're changing the galaxy shape as well. I don't usually play spiral uh, shape galaxies. <clears throat> But uh, I'm gonna try a, gar a spiral with uh, six arms, although maybe four would be a bit better to like condense things up to have uh, more people on one of the arms. But we're gonna keep it seven and few number a uh, six and few number of uh, constellations. We're gonna hold the density on medium, the size for large, since it's uh, around the number of players. In currently in the game and uh, yeah I think we're all good to go we once had a home world but we were poor caretakers had we not discovered the virtual relics, our tale would have ended there. By their grace, we were elevated, and we strive to serve their memory. 
Yet, in our moment of exaltation, a false prophet arose. The heretics summoned ancient demons and corrupted the faithful. But we refuse his lies and reject his accusations. We will see the heretic drown in his blasphemies. He will not break our will and bring ruin on our church. Only then can we shed our mortal cloth and rise. Endless. And we are in. The home planet of the Vodiani was a poor yet temperate world, and the fragility of its environment meant it was soon depleted. As a result, the Vodiani were driven into space by necessity and already have a long history as ship-bound people. Though their civilization is now tied to their arcs, their planet of origin remains a powerful symbol both as a lesson in ecology and as a memory of the weak and grotesque forms they had before virtual technology allowed them to be evolved beyond that. The violent rebellion of the heretic though long ago, left scars that have only recently healed. Now as you once more look outward, you hear reports of star systems full of wealth, alien populations rich with essence, and endless ruins to explore and venerate. Your faith is your North Star that guides you as the responsibility of your church weighs on the shoulders of your holy cloth. May the virtual saints guide you. Okay. So. I guess uh, we can all see the arms of the galaxy. Here they are. We also have a constellation that gives a science. We control one out of the three uh, systems needed. The problem is we won't be able to expand, I think, without arcs. I don't think they have colonizer ships, I reckon. No, they just have exploration vessels and leechers. So essentially, um, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, these are the guys that uh, you need to send over populated worlds, uh, regardless if uh, their main faction populated and uh, or, uh, I mean, minor factions, and you can uh, essentially harvest the essence. Now you can see over here, we have a, an extra bar, which shows the number of uh, arcs, which currently is one. We have uh, El Autel in the First Noble Crusade, which is uh, anchored over Fad. And uh, this is the essence um, amount. We're getting plus 10, I think, from the fact that we're anchored. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, system essence production, essentially. So, um, let's take a look here. We have religious and militarists. Uh, well, I guess if I really wanted something different, I would have played, uh, well, in terms of government, would have went with the Horatio and their uh, ecologist dictatorship. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I want to uh, actually go with any laws. Don't quite have... Uh, the influence, but yeah, this would give us the Species Stability Act. Would give us uh, some essence. How much? Well, we currently just have one. So I think let's go with it, actually. With enough support, Divine Edict backed up by passages of malleable meaning from the Empire's most holy texts can help to pass a most controversial law. That only the true race of the Empire be allowed to grow. Lesser races, whatever their breeding habits, are permitted to retain their present numbers through a one-to-one -one offspring fla or fiat, fiat, I think, while the original race are encouraged to multiply. Let's uh, let's go with that. Okay. 
So let's pop into the science. Already start with these two and uh, planetary transport network. Gonna go with the Xeno linguistics first. Varb Saint uh, Zuyenya is our hero and the question is will we assign i mean is there a difference i i mean i think that it is instead of assigning them to systems you would normally assign governors to arcs whereas uh, the military leaders would still kind of be assigned to normal fleets so i think we're going to uh merge these two together Because we are bound to eventually bump into pirates. I imagined it would be a bit more, a bit tighter, but uh, it seems to be quite large. Also looks pretty beautiful. I should mention that I uh, do have, I am running the uh, Untold Tales and Lost Symphonies, I think it, they were called. The two most recent content packs. Um, I think the latest patches also did something with the UI. Or maybe it's just me looking, or maybe it's just the fact that these guys have more options. Which does make the UI a bit uh, more compact. Okay. So, from what I can say, um, from what I can see, I'm not particularly sure how these uh, work. So, we have Holy Proliferation, which allows us uh, to use 250 essence to gain another uh, body and pop. We have uh, Alms for Essence, which is uh, Converting uh, dust into essence So they are content at the moment the thing is um, The Cathedral of all worldly affairs. I'm not particularly sure where that is It would have to be somewhere here, right? I mean, this is the um, uh, Very home so we're going to start the way we always do with food and industry well, food industry and then science and us. And I think we're going to actually leave the arc here for the time being. Uh, I think the improvements carry on with the arc. I mean, that would make sense. Although I'm not particularly sure. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. Trying to quickly... Ah, okay. So, um... In the interest of... Uh, yeah, we're going to assign the systems. We're gonna go with uh, El Autel and Pad. Okay, there we go. Um, do you happen to have a skill point? No, not really. <laughs> we'll look at the skills once we get uh, to it. If pressed to respond, Barb would indicate that his life began as a hydroponic farmer on a space station, a member of the Zolia clan, and a happy husband and father. When his system was taken by a Vodiani arc ship and his people assimilated, Varb was one of the few whose spirits were deemed worthy to ascend the gift of Vodiani citizenships. His mortal body was replaced by energy and Varb donned his cloth and became a member of the Protectorate. Little remained of the anger at his family's death and his own transformation. As a soldier of the Vodiani, Varb came to execute his duties professionally and faithfully. His attitude changed forever when he touched a ruin on a barren world and came into unprepared contact with the living spirit of Zuyenia. This virtual, dying slowly in an underpowered site, was glad to find redemption and life as a Vodiani saint. While Varb felt a trace of amusement from Zuyenia at the, at the notion, the powers that his cloth assumed from the spirit and the abilities that he gained were exceptional. Unhappily, Zuyenia awake, awoke in Varb memories of a lost family and of other ways that the people might choose to live. Torn but triumphant, Overtly efficient but silently in turmoil, Barb is a hero who is not sure where he will stand when the great penance comes. So, um... Should have probably looked at the class before signing, but we can uh, kind of still do. Focuses on fleet warfare and industrial production. Towards attack. So ideally, we would place uh, him... We would place Varb at our fleet. At the head of our fleet. Well, the thing is, this kind of works, right? Because I think the Arcs do uh, have some form of uh, offense. Yeah. So, um. I 
I think I think it's fine having uh, this guy as as a governor. Although he's a guardian, which would uh, kind of imply that yeah, maybe he would be better in a military context. But it's all right. The problem is I can't necessarily see him here. Hmm. All right. Let's not linger too much in the first turn. Let's at least pass two turns in this first, uh, first go at it. I wonder if the influence uh, zone translates to the arc. I mean, as I said, it would only make sense if the improvements would um, persist. So yeah, we found a new planet, but we can't exactly harvest it since uh, there's no one to harvest. The thing with the Vodiani is I don't quite uh, picture them being too uh, chummy with um, too many of the uh, minor factions. I mean, the point uh, of them is particularly to... Uh, to harvest. So that would only uh, make sense. I think the next one we're going we're going for should be Baryonic Shielding. Um, that's because it allows free movement. And I think uh, getting movement early on could be good. But I might change my mind. So that's going. Our probe won't probably find anything. I'm not sure. Alva has um, Eden Incense, which gives us influence. I think it would actually be pretty neat to move our ships over to Alva. Although we do only have tiny monsoon and small forest. And apparently the population is still uh, dependent on the number of uh, planetary slots, despite uh, the Vodiani being uh, shipbound people, which is a bit strange. I will say that much. Mm. Brother Ateb was caught gorging on the slaves today. Shall be forbidden sustenance for three days. His suit receptor is deactivated. All must obey the laws. It is a great and lonely thing to rule the Vodiani Protectorate, a heavy responsibility that I wear with pride. We have but our faith and our suits, our cloth, which protects and maintains our spirits during our holy efforts to guide the faithful discipline who's those who stray and punish uh, those who preach heresy. Messed that up. And of all of those heretics uh, who must be punished, this Iandrish Med, the infidel, is the greatest. He is also my brother. He who fomented a uh, rebellion, freed the slaves, stole a ship, and crippled the Protectorate for decades. He who discovered the Tabernacle of Lies and believed every word of it. The day will come when all deeds are counted and tallied in the great network that binds us together. And on that day the infidel will burn, even if it must be by my own hand, even if he is my brother. But that day is not yet to come, and by there will I hope it does not come soon, for we have much to prepare. A system to pacify, a new galaxy to civilize, the ignorant to convert, the infidel to punish. The rigors of fate, fate permit us no rest. My faith burns with the flame of a thousand suns, and no power in the galaxy will deter me. The Prestors and Custos will see to the faithful. I must look outward to secure our new home. Those who are here must come to accept us and learn our ways. Our first step is to deal with those who cannot understand reason, history, and the laws. They are pirates and shall be dealt with, as will all brigands and unbelievers. So essentially we have pirates in Alba, and uh, we have to destroy them. Not particularly sure if we can uh, totally do this yet, but, but we shall see. I don't reckon the 72 attack power on this thing could... Uh... Are the pirates over there? I think we might have pirates in both of these systems, and we might be going, getting ourselves into a pretty, pretty nasty surprise. Oh well. Whether you wish to make trade, research, wage war, or have peaceful relations with aliens, their communications must first be studied and conversation brought to a, to a higher level than merely dropping prepositions and speaking more loudly. You get a movement bonus. Oh, oh no! This is the next, uh, the next research going on. Be the first to produce uh, 100 dust in a single star system. Someone else did that. 
I'm uh, going to assume it was the Lumeris. The difficulty is a bit higher, so yeah, the AI will probably kick our asses with the deeds and everything. Um, I'm going to initially go with uh, the food, believe it or not. Yeah, we might actually have to bring our... Uh, uh, do I fight it? No, I think we're gonna retreat. Not even sure if I can repair them. So essentially these guys are 79, 253, 194, 350. The problem is if I move my uh, arc, it will uh, most likely stop um, my production. Economy and trade too. We have the creator of wealth deed, which um, is all about building that uh, silly little uh, thing. So how much would uh, the efficient shielding uh, cost us? It'll take us a while. I think I might actually want to uh, invest in something else initially. Hmm. Not entirely convinced. I need uh, I need those right away. The end wave fusion would give us a uh, resource improvement that would create three hundred manpower. Um, we don't need manpower currently. Do I want to go straight away for uh, the ships, though? I think so. I think we're less exploration focused. Um, so this might, I mean, it will most likely uh, require a bit of a different approach. So I'm going with uh, the efficient shielding. It's going to take nine turns. Uh, nine turns is a lot. But essentially, it might uh, might just as well uh, work out in our favor. So I might have also wanted to have a look at I don't know plasma metallurgy plus uh, plus three production for a strategic resource. Um, I might actually move my arc over to Alva afterwards. I don't think we're uh, pumping up pops at uh, that great of a rate. I mean, it, it'll currently take 41 turns, right? So I think it's mainly a matter of um, improvements in the case of Audiani. Because, yeah, pops are... I mean, I think our main uh, population generator will actually... Uh, will actually be what? The essence, right? I think it's also the only one. We don't have the dust. Okay, so. Let's withdraw the arc. Okay, so when withdrawn, it's uh, much, much more powerful. Let me go over there. Not really sure if I should be chasing the quest uh, so so eagerly. We got some meat and incense. We got poor soil on Fad and some influence. Um, I mean, I'll commit. I think getting those uh, those extra bits is going to be helpful. I'm not sure if I'll go for the other one straight away, but um, yeah, the problem is we're also not producing any um, any science currently. So yeah, we do want to be a bit more careful. And mostly uh, we're gonna go with the hull plating. 
Uh, let's actually watch our first fight as the body on it, yeah? Yeah, the arcs are absolutely massive. They're not, I mean, they're potent, they're potent in the early game, but I'm not sure how potent they'll be later on. They're gone. Pretty much. So I think that puts us at uh, one pirate fleet taken, but um, yeah, I am going to actually need to. Um, going to go with the pop. It would actually be worth uh, investing into uh, other things. Ah, uh, we'll see. So yeah, essentially, the um, they do uh, they do last, they do hold. So now that we've repaired them, we'll actually uh, send them back. Okay, as for uh, as for Alva, I mean as for building, we're gonna go with the fertile and temperate uh, sciency thing. Our dust production isn't good, right? So I might have to uh, do something about that after the efficient shielding. Maybe look into some. Uh, some improvements if uh, if it happens to be possible pretty sure the AI has a hundred thousand ships at the moment I mean I'm doing pretty poorly myself oh man <laughs> Judging by the score, yeah. I'll probably be dead by turn, what, 60? L let's say turn 60. Let's let's put that as a goal. Make it past uh, turn 60. Okay, good. Set. We have we have our mind set on that. That is that that is what we will uh, do. <laughs> Pretty much. Hopefully, I mean. Uh. By augmenting the natural magnetic characteristics of the whole material and using light alloys in construction, this improved ship design gives bonuses, bonuses, says, tonnage, and improved, improves kinetic and missile defense. I cannot speak. Okay. So the gouge uh, is a 79 attack, 209 defense. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to uh, create a couple of these. Thing is, we haven't yet found. Um, 
something to uh, poop another arc. Do arcs have upkeep? They do. It's quite expensive too. It's uh, it's actually 28. So it looks like the industrialists might overtake the uh, militarists in the uh, next elections. Why, of course, I forgot about the uh, what you call it. Hmm. Intergalactic supermarket, but it can only be built once per empire. Or galactic commodities, which gives us access to uh, a marketplace, but a marketplace that we can't uh, necessarily use at the moment. So I'm going to go with that. Um, with multi-thread management. After which... Uh... After which we might continue with our baryonic shielding. To get that uh, lovely movement bonus. There are heroes and there are heroes. I mean, you know, one of them is capitalized, so I guess it requires a different emphasis when saying it. There are heroes and there are HEROES! Ugh. Legends of prowess, familiar, familiar to all yet witnessed by none. The heroes of these tall tales are a dime a dozen. But in the leaders you have met and in the murmurs of your crews and colleagues, there are stories of other heroes. LIVING HEROES! Whose actions and efforts have changed the course of battles and bureaucracies whose actions and decisions have been pivotal in the rise and fall of empires. And when one speaks of these heroes, masters of dust and its vast powers, one also speaks of the place where they studied, where they learned these feats of strength and genius. It is simply referred to as the academy. Some seem to present it as a center of higher learning, while others mention it in tons more suitable to worship and in tones. More suitable to worship and epiphany. It would be good to know the truth of all this. It would be good if your ships were the first to make formal contact with it and meet its leader, shrouded in mystery. Yeah. It's uh, the good old Academy Quest. Which we probably won't get to first. Well, not first, at least, yeah. Hero management. Inspector. And we do, do we do the shields on the ships, on the sheepies, uh, health on fleet. I might actually be good. But uh, I'm going to go with the production. We want uh, those improvements. We definitely do. Okay, I'm going to uh, head over to Gni 8. Having this in our area of influence would uh, give us some influence, actually. So we're gonna go here, and we're going to um, send two probes out. After which we're going to follow that route. And on that note, uh, with the elections next turn, I think we're going to end the first uh, foray into the Vodiani. Relatively uneventful, because, uh, well, it's just turn 19, but uh, yeah, we'll have pirates probably go coming down on us and AI with the... Um, yeah, let's not look at the scores. That's not good. <laughs> uh, Alright. So yeah, this is uh, an attempt that may or may not end uh, quickly. We'll see. That's the part of it. And uh, tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow... Um, I'll also uh, start playing This War of Mine, most likely. It's a game I uh, played briefly when it launched and uh, I kind of want to revisit. Um, since I know it's good and uh, I want to uh, kind of give survival uh, a shot. So, you know, more games where essentially I could fail horribly in the first couple of uh, days or whatnot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, with that in mind, thank you guys for watching as always, and uh, I hope to see you next time.